Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening right now on iTunes, please, pretty please go and leave a five-star review. It can be sexy, creepy, a poem to me. It can just be you talking about the news. Whatever it is, so long as it's five stars, I'm going to read the best ones every week. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about our sponsors, Silk City Hot Sauce, Woo! I finally tried, uh, they sent me a big box a while back. Uh, I finally tried the flavor that's like called smokin'. It was really, really good. Again, had it in tacos. I'm constantly eating tacos. <laughs> um, go to silkcityhotsauce.com. Use the code CMP for 16, 16, for 15% off your order. But you're also going to get a free bottle of cherry sriracha which I'm going to pop this sucker open later today. You're going to get a free bottle of cherry sriracha and some stickers. Um, there's also another one that I tried. I think it's the dragon one that I feel like would be dope on chicken, like out on the grill. I don't have a grill, but I'm going to bring it to the next party I get invited to. Hopefully it's Labor Day. We're going to pray that I get invited to something. So go to silkcityhotsauce.com. Use the code CMP for 15% off your order. You're going to get the free chai sriracha and the stickers. I'm also very excited to talk about Adam and Eve. Uh, Adam and Eve think that the best part of staying at home is playing at home. That's right, guys. Go to adamandeve.com. Use the special code CMP at checkout so you can get almost any item online for 50% off. And when you use your discount code CMP, you also get bonus gifts like one of six spicy movies, a three-piece bonus set, plus you're going to get free delivery. Adam and Eve has thousands of gifts, toys, and movies that help us lock down some great sex. Isn't that funny? Um, just make sure when you go to adamandeve.com, use the code CMP. I was recently on a vibrator diet for a whole month of August and I just got off like today was September 1st and I could use it again. And I'm just like, eh, now I find myself like, what's the point? But I think I'm going to go on to adamandeven.com, maybe get a little fresh, fresh something, fresh little toy. Uh, so you guys use the code CMP, get your stuff. Uh, I'm very excited to have this gal on the program today. It's a program. She is an award-winning director, writer, producer of erotic content. Uh, she's a feminist. She is a proponent of positive sexuality, and her work aims to explore, embrace, and normalize the very path of female desires. Jackie St. James, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Oh, so good to have you. Um, there's so much to talk about. Um, oh. I, I really love, and I've been like, you know, preparing and listening to you on other other shows and um so you create you do a lot but you you know create write and direct porn basically and yeah. a lot of it is uh specifically porn geared towards women why mm -hmm. do you think we need that and how how is it so different than what everybody's you know everything that's out there already I mean, why we need it. I mean, I think uh, they did like a, I, I mean, I don't quote me because I don't have the statistics, but like they did a, um, like they were looking at demographics of people consuming porn on Pornhub. And there was like, it's women are consuming just as much as men, but there's nothing really geared towards them. And I hate saying like porn for women because obviously we have very desires, but um, what I define that as is more story driven pornography and porn that allows there to be more of a connection and realistic sex that women would actually enjoy and not like just titillating a guy for 30 seconds that's going to a tube site. Yeah, yeah, like even even with like, I'm thinking even somebody I am so attracted to in my life, you know, if it's my boyfriend, there's like no, I can't imagine any instance, even if it was his birthday that would call for just, opening the door and then I immediately start blowing him. Like, you know, if that's something you really wanted, I'm going to make that happen. I'm here to please. Um, but yeah, I agree that that is not super realistic. And I, and I find like, I do watch porn, especially like the more girls I get to know that are in the industry. I like, I feel like a friend supporting them. Like, Oh, I want to see, I want to see your work, Jaden Cole. Um, <laughs> Danny Daniels, I want to check you out. Do you ever masturbate to them? That's what? the question. Uh, no, like if I'm, I, I masturbate to my thoughts and like, but maybe I've yet to find, like I've talked about this with my therapist, like maybe I just haven't found the kind of porn that I would like 
really want to masturbate to. Like if, if my boyfriend wanted to watch something and we were both going to like masturbate to it, cool. I'll do it. I'll do like almost anything, but, um, yeah, for like left to my own devices. Like I'm not like, I can just exactly. Maybe it's the story thing. Cause I can dream up scenarios in my head yeah. and it's like, it's like, I just masturbate to my own thoughts. Which but wait, can I ask crude. you why, why are you watching the porn then? Like, I mean, just because it seems like there wouldn't be a reason to watch it if you weren't. Like I have, like I know with X, I had an ex who was super into it and like loved yeah. watching it a lot. And, and I'd be like, you know what? Like, what am I going to like have you masturbate by yourself? Like if I'm, I just didn't want to be separate from his experience, you know? Okay. And, and I think it maybe a little bit got into my head, like, well, if I don't watch this with him, like you, and I, I think maybe you always have that. I don't know if this is most women, but you sometimes have that fear. Like I sometimes would have that fear, like, oh, whatever he's watching is way hotter than whatever I can provide. So if I'm not like down with this, like even if I don't love this porn, like, well, I'm then I'm separating myself from like our sexual experience. Does that sound crazy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does only because I think it's just so individualized, like in terms of, um, you know, I, I, back in the day when I used to like search on my boyfriend's computers and their history, I was always like blown away by the things I found. That they were <laughs> and it was never me or anything that's like me. What did you find? Right? Like, so you just opposite of like your type look wise. Yeah. I mean, my ex was really into Asian school girls. I also, oh, found yes. that I know I was like, Oh, well, okay. That's not me. And then he also was searching for like a, um, this is like probably too much information, but he was also searching for man boob reduction. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that could have been personal. That could have been a little low key side project. Yeah. Yes. So, but yeah, I mean, there was never anything that was like shocking to me that he was looking for. So. And then you're like, what? And then your, your search browser get confused and it's like man boob porn. What? <laughs> That's right? fetishy. That's a fetish. I don't this, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I can't remember what it is. It's like rule 34, rule something where it's like, if you can think it, it exists in porn. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, my very, very first boyfriend cheated on me with an Asian girl. So I feel like I'm a little, even though it was years ago, like yeah. there's still part of me that's like, ah, Asian girls are just hotter than, you know, like just feeling bad and yeah. inferior. I guess yeah. a lot of this has to do with my own confidence issues rather than <laughs> taste and for yeah, the more I talk, the more I'm like, huh, I got a lot of shit to work out. Um, <laughs> I've heard um, other girls in the industry say, oh yeah. So, so at, touching back on like porn for women. Yeah. That's so interesting. Like what do women like about a story? Cause it's not about like, are we less visual? I've heard people say women are less visual. No, I think that we are, but I think that the visual turns us on when the story is there. So like, you know, I mean, I can remember getting off to like two people kissing in like a regular <gasps> yeah. movie because it was yeah. so hot. But I think it's the reason why the visual was hot was because the connection backed it up. So it's like, we need both. We need to know what the the relationship is between the two people. It doesn't have to be like a love story. I mean, it could be cheating, it could be anything. But when you have that, then it, it adds to the physical. Like, I don't think I could just watch two people randomly kissing and be like, that's hot. But yeah. if the connection is there, then I'd be like, yeah. I wonder if that speaks to the, stereotypically speaking, like more empathetic nature of women in general. That sure. if like there's genuine chemistry, we're going to sniff that out like a okay. bloodhound, you know? Whereas men are like, oh, these two girls are hot. They're kissing. It's like, it may not occur to them if they like, they might hate each other's fucking guts, but yeah. like- they can't tell or it doesn't matter if they're just hot, then that's yeah. enough. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. I'm sure to the guy, I mean, <laughs> as long as they're hot, it's, yeah. I, they, I, I think it's much easier to um, please a man through porn just because they're, it doesn't require much effort if you have good looking people or whatever mm. it is you want. It has, it probably just goes back to biology. Like way back when it was more important <laughs> for men to come than women. <laughs> yes, correct. For, for reproducing, but you know, we still have to try. <laughs> yes. So, so yeah, women are interested in like, how do we get here? Yeah. The backstory, what the feelings are between each other. Is it like, you know, 
uh, what's it called? Like, not like Romeo and Juliet, but it's like, is it a forbidden, like naughty thing? But like, there's still so much chemistry and connection where like less physically could be happening. But if you're like, oh my God, these two are so hot for each other. Yeah. Like that would do more than like, all right, he, we get it. He is a big dick. That's very nice. But like, what does, what is he going to do with that big dick? Like, what is he... How is you know what's funny too is that the big dick in porn is is really more for the men and and we're mm. talking about like straight men um, that that want to see a woman getting pummeled by this gigantic cock whereas like women don't actively seek out like gigantic cock like that's not no it's like ever. you ever had a gigantic cock that is that, a liability it's that horrible. is like. Like my, yeah. my boyfriend is on the bigger side, but he's like the bigger side of perfect. You know what I mean? I'm not just saying that cause he's listening right now in the corner. Um, but like you too big is, is not good. You can't have fun. There's no wild abandon. You can't like drop down from a bedpost on it. You're going to be injured. You know, it's, yes. you I think be, we, I wish you know. more men knew that, that like, you know, I, I really, I know I have some friends that are size Queens, but when I say size Queens, they're not talking like porn size queen they're talking just like an average cock that maybe is a or maybe a little bit above average but okay. uh, yeah i i've never had fun with gigantic dicks so what is like big for average regular people versus like porn big is it really I mean, that much of a difference size wise i mean i would say maybe seven and a half would be a good size cock but i mean like anything between that like five to seven is good five i don't think less than that is bad I think it's bad because the guy gets in his head. And so if he's yeah. like four inches, he feels inadequate or whatever. And he doesn't need to, if he can deliver in other areas. Yeah, um, why is, why is cock size become so such a big deal for men? Wait, maybe it's like, they are more visual and they are, I think sometimes innately more competitive. Like look at YouTube, how many ranking shows there are just with porn stars alone. Men love to rank. They love to number. They love to like, yeah. order so i wonder if it like just appeals to that nature in them like the comparing they want to be like the most whatever biggest thinking that's the most virile or i'm yeah, not sure but, i mean <laughs> i'd love them to line up like a bunch of really hot chicks and have the girl pick the dick that she wanted to fuck her and i bet you a million dollars it's not going to be the 10 12 inch cock yeah oh oh my god is that how big they get 10 12 inches like oh, yeah. what's the biggest that you've like that's out there right now I think, um, well, that I've ever worked with, it was, I love that we're, we're talking about the dick and not the human being attached to it. Um, <laughs> the biggest dick I ever directed, I think it was 11 inches. And I mean, yeah, it was Shane Diesel. And he, he also, it, he's not just long, he's what also very 11? thick. What does 11 look like? What's oh, 11? I mean. This? I, I had the dild. No. This is four inches, right? So 11, I mean, no. They, they literally require two hands and you couldn't get, you know, this around. So it was like a Coke can. It was actually really <sighs> scary. Is it like my U-Boom speaker? Like this is, yes. no way. How does this even uh, get into it? A... That gets into an ass much easier than a pussy. Oh my God. You have to work up to it. You have to do like graduated anal beads, don't you? Like, no, for the butt, like it's funny with Shane Diesel, it was like so much easier to shoot anal scenes with him than vaginal because a lot of girls wow. just don't take it. Oh. Yeah. So, mo generally speaking, most girls can take a bigger dick in their ass than yes. in their vagina. Okay. Wow. And I women notoriously can take bigger cocks than nuts. What? I, I don't understand that biologically, but it's, yeah. it's true. Yeah. It's weird. Well, I'm 5'3. Listen yeah. up, dudes. Hey. <laughs> so, I could take a. I could take a big one. That's interesting. <laughs> you would think that the vagina could take more because it has has the capability to push out a child. Yes. At some you point. Think. Yeah, you think so. Wow. But it's like, you know, sometimes you, you poop and that, you know, <laughs> that's a lot. Not to get too gross, but you know, sometimes uh, you have a little fiber and you surprise yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's cool. That's cool. I, I would love to see that porn, by the way, like women lining up and men lining up and then they pick who they want to fuck. Ah! And then why? I think it would be great because I bet you the big cocked guy would not be chosen. Oh no. And then he would be like, he would need to be consoled. You know, 
No, they have so, they get so much for having a big dick in terms of like praise by society. Okay. So yeah, you're right. Thing? They're going to make yeah. it. All they have to do is post one sweatpants pic and then they're back on top. They're back <laughs> on top of the world again. Yeah. Do you, who do you think is having more, who, who do you think is more sexually active outside of work for porn stars? Like the male porn stars or the female porn stars? Or is it hard to judge? Hard to say. I mean, I, I, I would think the women would want to give their vagina a break. Mm -hmm. do, do you know what I mean? Cause they're they're I, I don't want to say like literally and figuratively often if they're doing, um, you know, straight porn or whatever, they're taking a pounding. And sometimes it's by a, you know, and there's, I, there's a period of time where a lot of the performers have to go through at the beginning of their career where their body just has to acclimate to having that kind of sex all the time where they yeah. often get like, you know, health issues and things like that. And not, I'm not talking STDs. Like, I mean, I'm just talking like urinary tract infections or things like that. Yeah. Sylvia Sage was telling me all about her, um, regimen. She'll put like a, what's it called? I know it's not a borax. Borax. Pill. Bor borax. borax. Borax? Yeah, it's something. Like, that's glass, but but yeah, it's like boron. no boron. Oh. Shit, I don't know. It's something. She'll put boric it up acid. there, and it'll boric acid. Yeah, it'll like clean it all out. I was fascinated. I was like, yeah, yeah. of course. There's a whole set of rules for upkeep. You know, it's oh, like sure. a job. Yes. So so it's interesting. So like a newer girl has to her body has to acclimate to essentially like kind of your not all the time, but maybe more often than she was used to like, right, being pounded pretty frequently. Yeah. And then how does that link link into because I know, like, in the last couple of years, there's been kind of some news or some maybe drama about boundaries on set and like assault on set. And, you know, where do you, how do you feel? Cause you know, on, on one hand, some people feel, well, this is what they signed up for. It's you're oh. having sex for a living. And then on the other hand, it's like, well, you also established boundaries, right? So like, what are your feelings on it? Cause I know this is, has been a hot topic lately. My feeling would be, where's the person that said, this is what they signed up for. So I can kick them in the fucking nuts. I mean, seriously. Okay. You're going to sign up for rape. No. Um, you know, I think it's it's interesting because I've always worked with really good people and people that would never cross that line. So it was shocking to me when I found out all the allegations that were happening and all the things that were going on. And then the longer I've been in the business, the more you hear. And it's unfortunate. I think that there was this, at least this is what I'm told, and this is not at all my belief, but some of the older school people that worked in the business, it was sort of like back in the day, it was sort of anything goes and you could get a blowjob in a bathroom. And it's like, that's just the way porn is. It's just, you know, everyone just does whatever they want, but that maybe wasn't what the girls were feeling, but that's kind of how they viewed it. Whereas yeah. when I got in, it was sort of more and more women were in, you know, uh, producing and directing. And obviously women usually don't carry on like that or let's hope not. But um, then it, it became that more and more women were becoming vocal about things that were happening on set. I mean, and I heard some horrific stories, I actually solicited stories from a lot of girls um, two years in a row. And I had like over a hundred stories of like misconduct on set, which wow. ranged from, you know, rape or boundaries being crossed to like one guy withheld a check for a blowjob. And I mean, like, these are things that are just like not okay or acceptable Yikes. in any way, shape or form. So like, yeah, my opinion is like, get rid of those people and they should not be directing, but a lot of times they're protected. And a lot of times, you know, it's scary. And I mean, think about Harvey Weinstein and I think it definitely, you know, is similar in porn where when you have the big man on top, that's powerful a lot of people don't want to speak out. And I think that was the way with porn because some of the people that were accused were working for some of the top studios. Mm -hmm. So of course it's easy to accuse the guy who's shooting porn in his basement because there's nothing to lose by accusing him. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily accusing, but like if he did something, it's easier to speak out against the guy in the basement than it right. is the guy who's going to win me an AVN or get me like so much more work. Uh, so that's yeah. kind of where I think there was a lot of, disconnect that's scary and it's like that you look at that and you're like that goes on in every industry everything. you know everything everywhere everywhere i mean it's not just hollywood or porn i mean it's it's corporate america as well i mean it's different because um there's less opportunity probably in corporate america than there is in hollywood or porn 
Yeah. Where, you know, going to private locations or being alone or, you know, in porn, you're, you are so vulnerable because you're getting naked and you're having sex. And the other thing that I, you know, and not to just like go on and on, but like the other thing that I think a lot of people don't think about when they're like, oh, well, she signed up for this is that like, can you, can you think back to when you were 18? Would you have stood up to your 40 year old boss? Like probably not. No, I'm, I'm in like my thirties, mid thirties. Specifically, <laughs> we don't know that number No, And I still like, no, like God, no. Like I have condescending boss type older men, people like throughout the years, I never stood up. Like it's because yeah. like growing up, I just never had any examples of that, of like women who were standing up for themselves, like in my life. Sure. So it's just, and there, there's always this fear, like you're going to get fired. Are you ready yes. to get fired? <laughs> you know? It, it's um, sad that women have to tolerate that. But like, I think that's the thing is like when people criticize women in porn and they're like, why didn't you say anything? I'm like, she's fucking 18. And uh, like the guy might've been 40. So it's like, are they really going to do that? And plus they have agents that might make them feel bad about having said something. So it's. Yeah. <clears throat> it's so while there has been some progress, I'm sure there's probably still girls out there afraid yeah. to speak up and things happen. And it's like, right. Plus you, plus maybe guys who get into porn and go, Oh, this is the anything goes industry. So it's not, yeah. not yeah. Your for me. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been in the industry now, Jackie? Um, like almost 10 years. Okay. Wow. How, what are the biggest like standout changes between then and now? I mean, I think that the, the advent of, of only fans and the girls kind of, not necessarily needing producers. I mean, I started when like the producers were um, the powerhouses and people wanted to work for the biggest and best studios. And now it's sort of like, I mean, the pandemic has changed things a lot as well, but like the pandemic is what kind of brought the girls only fans to the forefront. And they realized, oh, we don't really need you. Hmm. Um, which has created a little bit of a, some tension between producers and, and performers, not all of us, but like there were a lot of girls who were very angry and vocal towards producers lumping us into the same category of being like these awful people that are somehow abusing. And I'm like, I, I feel like I shouldn't fall in that category, but then it was like, well, fuck you. We don't need you guys anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'm glad to know that, especially with this Ella Thorne thing that just happened where it's like, what yeah. Can I get? <laughs> yeah. And, it, and you wonder like, even like, Bell, we'll definitely get to, Bella for sure um it's almost like I mean it's still award award shows like AVN and XBiz are still such a big part of the industry it seems and it's like well they're not going to give out awards for your only fans right it would have to be like a new thing would have to sort of come together for that I mean won't you still just need the big studios if you are are trying to get one of those AVNs I mean Put it this way, if it was a choice between AVN or me making 30 grand a month, I would take the 30 grand mm -hmm. and take the award. But you're right. I mean, I think a lot of this is like the, the proverbial pat on the back that a lot of people want the recognition. Uh, I think AVN probably will have to add some category of like, you know, most prominent OnlyFans person. Although I don't know how you can really gauge that. I guess the, it would have to be fan voted. Right. Cause then is, is it up to somebody to then become, join how many Probably. thousands of OnlyFans accounts, yeah. you know? Probably. That'll be expensive. Yeah. And then you just go through probably. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, I've heard mixed reviews on, on the Bella Thorne thing. Um, it seems like Twitter and, and people I haven't heard of very, very mad at Bella Thorne. And then I, I did an, an emergency episode the other day when it just came out with like Jaden Cole, um, Randy James and uh, Smarty Cat, who's more, I think more of a producer. I don't know if you've heard of any of them. Uh, I, I we, know uh, Jaden and Randy, but not uh, Smarty. And we talked about it and their, their feeling was, well, this has been a problem that's kind of been going on for a while. Oh, that, really? you know, that girls can, you know, they'll have a, what's it called? Like pay. Bella got in trouble mostly for like the click to, to click to watch it picture. Right. And she said, Oh, this is a nude photo. And then supposedly you'd click it and it wasn't nude or it wasn't, it was lewd, not nude. She was like covering up everything. Did she um, say it was nude? 
I think she did. Yeah, that's why p- the fans got so upset because it, they would pay two hundred dollars and for a, a basically Instagram, you know, quality photo. photo. And uh, yeah, some of the I've heard some of the girls say like, well, this you know, it's kind of been a problem. Like, you know, girls will they'll charge for something and then not deliver, and then people try to get refunds. But I've also heard a lot of negative, you know opinions towards Bella Thorne so I was I wanted to know what your feelings were I mean <clears throat> look I think that the the thing that I think it shows more than anything is that mainstream is still that it still rules and so um <clears throat> mainstream can come in at any time and kind of steal the thunder because it's I mean I remember when Bella directed a porn movie and and she acted like she was the only woman who'd ever directed. And I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, there's been so many of us since like the 80s. I mean, it's just, how you know. Long, but, how, when was that? When did she direct? I, I can't remember. I think it was like a year or two. And it was for Pornhub, I'm pretty okay. sure. And they made a really big deal about it. And there was like a lot of press releases. And, um, you know, I don't really have any opinion. I, I actually had no idea who she was. When I saw the press <laughs> just talking about her directing, I was like, Who's this Bella Thorne? Apparently she was like a, on a Disney show or something? She was, yeah, she was like a Disney actress. And then, okay. yeah. Never heard of her. I mean, look, I, I think it's, it's one of those things where it's like the, the trends are always going to adapt to what happens. And she's just one of those things that's forcing a new way to adapt. And it's also kind of a wake-up call to a lot of girls. I mean, I've heard rumors for a long time about OnlyFans kind of moving away from porn and I don't know if that's true but that will be a big wake-up call for a lot of performers that are using that as their sole source of income um I don't have anything to back that up it's just rumors that I've heard who knows if it's true so you're wary of girls that are just using OnlyFans not wary per se I I think it's fine I think it's great I think the girls should be utilizing whatever they can Um, I think more important than anything the girls should be saving their money however they're making the money they should be saving it yeah Uh, but no, I have no, I have no issue with anyone um, making their own income. I think I take issue with it's. It's like when the power has shifted to sort of shit on people that once hired them is where I have a problem with that. And yeah. um, I'm fortunate that I have good relationships with most of the people in the business. Um, but I think that the power may shift again. And if anyone has worked in porn long enough, they will know it's cyclical. And so, you know, at one time it was scripted stuff was cool. Then it was pretty porn. Then it was hardcore gonzo. And now it's going back to pretty. And so it's like OnlyFans is going to kind of be the same way where maybe it's content, but who knows, are users going to stick with these girls long-term? You know, it, it, I can understand super fans, but like people that want to see variety, are they going to stick with these girls? I don't know. I, I haven't done any. I yeah. Have no clue. Yeah. It's the idea of like, okay, will, it's, and it's probably mostly guys that are customers of OnlyFans, like, will these guys get to a point where they're sick of seeing, yeah, it's their favorite girl, but like in her bedroom every day, are they going to be like, all right, we've seen your whole house, you know, yeah. uh, I've seen you masturbate in every room of your house, like, you know. Are the, are the tastes going to shift to like, okay, wanting more production and wanting more professional and yeah, yeah. like you said, like pretty and like still made up and, you know. Yeah. Whereas, and also like-, like the girls, I don't think, I mean, this is the thing, like, again, um, where I get a little defensive when some girls came after producers and kind of lumped us in this giant category of like awful people that have abused them. And I, I certainly would never fit into that category, but Um, you know, there's a lot that goes with production that I don't know if the girls on OnlyFans are doing. Mm -hmm. And one of the rumors that I heard is that if they're not getting the appropriate paperwork for 2257, the law will just have a giant hammer coming down and it's just a matter of time. So I'm almost certain that none of these girls, um, have, and maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe I'm totally and completely wrong, but there's a lot of legal paperwork that producers like myself, literally days that I spend on paperwork and payroll and following the law just so I don't get sued or just so that my productions don't get shut down. And I would be shocked if the majority of people on OnlyFans are getting this paperwork that's required. What is this 2257? I mean, so there's a law, I think it was maybe in effect since Tracy Lord's shot at porn at underage or whatever, where we have to get like the ID pictures, the model releases, 
and there's a whole lot of paperwork we have to get and then it has to be stored in a specific location that if um, whoever, I don't know who that person is, Big Brother eventually comes after looking for it, that it exists in that location that we have stated. And I Can think it be it, some like could it be like your house? You know what I mean? Like could it be yes, the place it where you live? Location. Okay. It cannot be a post office box or okay. anything. It has to exist in a location that somebody could come by at any time to grab. Now the problem is that I think a lot of the performers don't think about this either, is that you know, sometimes people can hold a grudge or get angry. And what happens if you shot a person with that person and then they call you out on it? Again, I don't know, but I'm just saying I think it's it's dangerous if you're not following the law because somebody will always pay at some point. Yeah. And it's like, it's almost like it's so much easier when it's just you and a couple of people coming over and you don't have all the, like the production people. It's so yeah. much easier to forget those details, especially it's like, you're a content creator, you're a performer. You're like, Oh, now I can create whatever I want, but you don't come from that background of producing and you don't have that, like the business mind, the law mind, the like, okay, odds and ends. It never occurs to me to like cross my T's, you know, all those details. You're not, cause you're thinking about, Oh, I can make my own stuff and just get it out there really quick because we yeah. all can join we can all be sex workers with the thing in our pockets. So, yes. which is like awesome. And also, but, but if you're not the kind of person who is thinking about the details, right. So it could be so easily, it would, it would never even, even occur to you. Even like uh, somebody was telling me the other day that there was a performer using uh, mainstream songs. And I'm like, oh, oh no, not do that. Because like what happens is they're creating the content that they think is behind this wall of safety because it's their only fans but somebody downloads that and then that gets uploaded. They're in deep shit. Really? So it's sort of like, especially with music and things like that. I mean, like I have to jump through hoops just to show a fucking picture that has a barcode on the back. Like you have to scan the barcode. You have to show that it was mass produced. Like there's so many legalities. Wow. Like the company that I work for is in a massive lawsuit for showing, I mean, it's like a million dollar lawsuit for a picture that appeared in the house that they shot porn. So like wow. think they're immune and I'm like, good luck. I hope it doesn't get you because oof. You know, and I don't know if OnlyFans would be liable either. I mean, maybe. Because they yeah. could they're gonna go after the person with money and maybe it's OnlyFans. And if OnlyFans right. isn't requiring the paperwork, well and there's nothing stopping somebody from ripping some OnlyFans uh, content and then uploading it to Pornhub on their own account. And then they can make money off of your OnlyFans stuff and you might never find out. And then it's on Pornhub, but then they ding you for like a song. Well, yeah. then that person be like, well, this is mine. This is uh, Randy James. This Correct. Thing. Right. Cause it's, it's not TikTok. You know what I mean? It's not just like, no. hey, it's all internet content. It's fun. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's TikTok is what based in China or whatever. So it's like, there's different laws in different countries. Like I think the tube sites are served through, um, Europe. So that's how they're protected against copyright laws and things like that. Wow. Wow. That's really interesting. Um, what do you think the obsession is with, cause you've been in the industry 10 years. What do you think the obsession is with the stepmom, stepdad, step porn genre that has been blowing up it's all anybody can talk about when did you see this trend coming on um i think it was probably in 2012 and and look it existed before that like in the 70s there was this amazing movie called taboo which actually was real incest i mean not like Like they weren't, they weren't in real life. They weren't related, but like in the story, it was a mom and her son and there was no step. Like it was, she had sex. No with step, her. just the straight no, up. Yeah. yeah. No no time. Time. You could get away with so much more. Like there was, you know, urination and like, there was like things that you didn't have to worry about. And then like people went to prison in the, I think it was like nineties or early two thousands for obscenity. So now we have to be so careful. So now it becomes step. But oh wow, the thing is, you know, we won't make it if you're not buying it. And since everything is free, we kind of go after what is actually selling and what people are actually paying for. And they're actually paying for that crap. So that's why we make it. Yeah, that's what I figured. It's like the market decides everything, just like kind of with, uh, like I compare comedy to porn all the time because I'm a stand-up comedian and I like, over, like I've interviewed, you know, comedians and 
porn stars and like it, I've I noticed so many um, similarities and kind of like the kind of entrepreneurial aspects of it. It's like you have to know kind of be like a one man band sometimes. And, sure. and I, you know, then you have people there's, there exists cancel culture, like in porn and in comedy. And, you know, it's sometimes your political beliefs can get you in trouble for your industry. And how, what are, what are the thoughts? Like, do you, do you know girls who have lost jobs or lost relationships because they've been vocal about their political opinions? Yeah, I mean, I, I got canceled for, I had to shut down my Twitter. And I Whoa. mean, like, I'm, I'm a director. It was because I didn't say anything. Uh, and so I was okay. attacked by uh, a performer. And what ended wow. up being so heart-wrenching to me was like, I'm always on the side of like people and human beings and like fairness and diversity. And like, to, like for me to be targeted, I was like, Wow. And like, I don't like being outspoken because I, I'm not, I'm a Gen Xer and I like, I do pride myself on that because like I'm from a generation where we don't pat ourselves in the back and like grandstand and talk about our good deeds. We just fucking mm -hmm. do them. Yeah. You just work. So like, yeah. Yeah. I mean like, so like I had been donating money, which I never posted because to me, and you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't yeah, I, have to be like, look how much money I'm doing to anything ever, yeah, even like before ever. this year, you know? Correct. Correct. Yeah. I have never been that way. And I donate to many different causes. And one was a specific cause that I was called out for not being more vocal about. And it was so upsetting to me. The girl that did it, I was looking for work because of the pandemic. And she specifically said, never hire her because, you know, she doesn't support us or whatever. And like, okay, I don't know her. So I don't really care. But I'm assuming this is Black Lives Matter. It was Black Lives yeah. Matter. Yeah. And like, I had donated to Black Lives Matter before any of this came out, but I'm not gonna be like- It's also oh, like yeah. none of anybody's business. And also it's like not. from all your work and everything you, you've you said on appearances, it's like, you're like, a, you're pro every, you know what I mean? Everybody. Like, so, and you're a woman and you're like, you know, like you're making female friendly porn, you're a feminist, you're like so super, how does it get more inclusive than you? So the fact that people are shitting on you is- Well, you can always be more inclusive. And like, there were times where I wanted to be more inclusive, but you also, and I think people don't understand, like you're also kind of at the beck and call of like your production company that asks right. for certain things. But to me, it was like, literally I, I was gutted by this. I mean, just uh. I couldn't believe it. And like to see- other performers that knew me like because it's the one thing if somebody hates on you and they don't know you like this girl didn't know me from anyone but then like people that did work for me and know better started attacking me and then I got uh. accused like I unfollowed one girl and then she accused me like of supporting cops because I unfollowed her because she was anti-cop and I'm like no you're just so negative I don't want to be following wow. you. Wow and what if you did support cops like what does that oh, have to do with right. your work you know Correct. that's that's to me it's, that's really frustrating. It is it's sad because I feel like again and this is again the Gen Xer thing. Like I grew up in a generation where like Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich would meet together and talk and they're like as far on the political spectrum as you can get and people talked and now it's like the younger generations like talk at and grandstand and you mm -hmm. know talk about how much they're doing but what are they really doing? I don't know. Um, hopefully yeah. they're doing something, I don't know. But like for me, it's just like I'm from a different world and, and so like, you know, it didn't hurt my work um, I had to shut down my Twitter, which was my only access to getting work, but some really wonderful performers reached out privately. You know, a lot of people don't want to come to your defense publicly. Yep. Um, I've noticed that too. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't want to be targeted. And I, again, I totally get it. Um, I will never, like, I, I literally, I'm back on Twitter. I took a month off. Many people took a month off in solidarity with me because they oh. couldn't believe that you know, yeah. I was getting attacked, but like, yeah, I mean, there's, I think that the more conservative performers do get a lot of attacks. I don't know if they've lost work because everyone's kind of lost work, but like, yeah. you know, Brandy Love is very outspoken as a conservative, um, but I don't know if she's lost work as a result. Jessa Rhodes has recently come out as being conservative. I don't know if she's lost work either. Isn't that funny that you have to say they've come out as conservative? Like, <laughs> this is so comparable to like coming out of the closet in the right. 50s. No, it is. Yeah. yeah, no, it is. It is for sure. And like, 
in doing so, I, what I will say, because I follow both of them on Instagram and I know them both personally, Jessa more so. Um, Jessa was like a daughter to me for many, many years, but I, I did notice the vehemence against them and, and how they were kind of being categorized in ways that I felt was unfair to who they were. But I mean, again, I, I don't, I don't know, scour through people's social yeah. media and look at every goddamn post because like I have things to you do. You have a life. <laughs> I have a life. So like if they maybe said something offensive, like I haven't seen it, but like what I have seen, I haven't seen anything that like, okay, you support Trump. That's your business. And I, I I'm fine with that. I mean, I, I don't, but like, I don't have a problem that you do. Um, yeah. And, and your beliefs should not affect, you know what I mean? Like if you're not bringing them on set and you're a good person and you're, you're on time and you do good work and you work well with everybody and you're a good person, like your beliefs should not matter. And you also should be able to express your beliefs. Like we all have free speech. You should be able to say how you feel and, and have that not like, you know, come back to bite you in the ass. Cause it's like, you're not going to be like doing a porn and be like, all right, in this next scene, we're going to be uh, talking about Trump. You know what I mean? Like, I can't imagine it comes uh, up yeah. too often. You no, know? and I mean, I think what, I think what people do miss and, you know, I understand like there's, there's a lot of, of hatred towards more conservative people, but like, I, I think that people, because everyone wants to categorize, assume if you're supporting a political party, you are this checklist of horrible things Yeah. versus like, you know, my parents are very pro-life. So they tend to lean that way. And like, while I don't agree that that should be your voting, you know, like, like that's your main source of like why you're voting a one way, Just a single you're still issue. entitled to do that. Yeah. You know, I mean, like you're, it's still a free country. And if you, if that's your number one issue, then yeah, you should be voting for that. I mean, so I don't know. It's just, I wish we could talk. I wish we could talk again, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's. I don't know if you can go back from where we're at, where it's like, you can't, I can't vocalize any opinion about anything ever. I mean, it I sucks. did vocalize an opinion and got canceled. So it's like, yeah. I definitely don't want to say anything. Yeah. I'll talk about like, yeah, I think cops should be able to do their job. Oh, you love Trump. I'm like, I didn't vote for Trump. Like I didn't. Yeah, I and, know. And, and, and like your support of, of any one thing, ex exactly what you said, Jackie, certain types of people will shift you into a category where all these boxes are checked for you. And it's like the identity politics, politics is more important than the, than the individual Actual individual yes. and putting you in, a, not only putting you in a box, but sealing it up so that you can never it's like we're all learning our hopefully we're all growing as people all the time new information should yes. constantly be coming in your your opinions should change over time with For more sure. information and through right more conversations we all should but like that sucks well you're already in that box like you know you you're you like cops therefore you're a trump supporter therefore i'll never yeah. fuck with you or work with you and it's like whoa that's yeah. it's like by doing that you're actually putting yourself in a box because you're cutting yourself off of uh, for so many working relationships, friendships, like I lost friends because they thought I voted for Trump. And it's just like, and I mean, also, like the thing yeah. is, like, whatever you voted for and whatever you did, you know, I think people often make the assumption that, like, if you vote one way, well, that way, I guess, um, that you are supporting somebody that has values that are against somebody else. And, like, a lot of times, you know, like, I, I've not, you know, liked a lot of the choices. I mean, I liked Obama, but like, I haven't liked a lot of the choices that we've been presented with. And I think the thing comes down to like, I'm not voting for the person. I'm voting for the issues that I'm more on par with. Of course. Because at yeah. the end of the day, it's never really just the person. It's like so many no. other people. Involved. There's so many other people helping them. And, and <laughs> yeah, uh... so it's like, I mean, I, I, my parents are, are great, incredible people. They're also super right wing and because of the pro-life thing. And I get it. I, I don't necessarily agree with them, but like, that's what they value and that's important to them. And so I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, you're you know, a horrible person because you're voting on the right. Like, no, you just don't have, hold the same things that I hold. Sure. Yeah, that's definitely a Gen X thing. Like my brother is Gen X. Like I'm, me and my sister, we just like sneaked into being millennial. So it's like, I don't feel like a true millennial, yeah. but I definitely do notice a difference between like him and him and my sister and I. It's like, yeah, that quiet, good work ethic, not bragging about what a good person you are, but you're like doing good deeds, working hard, like good parents. Like I just feel like you, it's, I don't know. To me, it seems like 
perhaps the best generation going right now. <laughs> I think um, so. We yeah. still are willing to talk to people, but unfortunately nobody's willing to talk. Like I would love to talk to somebody on both sides of the spectrum because I'm a libertarian. So like I would love Me to too. Yeah. That's the best party. I wish that we had like somebody representing us in this election. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> There's I don't know. It's I think historically people have not taken libertarians seriously and, and, and most people don't care to like look into what the libertarian beliefs are. And I think if more people did, they would find themselves aligning more so with that. And it's just like, it's like the the two party system is like, it's pretty stifling, but you know, on on, uh, issues and not, you know what I mean? A party. Yeah. Uh, That would be great. Like I'm right. And I'm left depending on the issue. So yeah. Yeah. Me too. I don't like to say, well, I guess this is like, it's like my parents, like this is the more important issue to them, yeah. but they have left values. So it's like, you know, it's right. And it's not just like you're voting for the issue. It's like, no, it's like, which team is going to come in, you know? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Um, I've yeah. heard a lot of people say over the years that there is, I, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but like almost like a, there's racism in porn, but that porn is behind culture like 10 years and i think like well like we said before the market decides a lot of our work the production studios kind of dictate our projects i think people my people i mean like most dudes right like let's say most dudes are keeping the porn industry afloat and when they go to like type in what they want to jerk off to i'm imagining that it's not a lot of like woke terms you know what i mean they're not like having politically correct correct things that they want to masturbate to the the search the searches themselves are kind of stereotypical so do you feel like that correlates to this sort of issue of the, of the of the porn world being behind regular culture or maybe being a little bit more racist or is there something more to it than that oh no i mean i think the porn industry is 100 percent racist i felt that way uh, and i and again like i don't want to lump everyone in because not everyone in porn is 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 racist and i think you're right in saying like of course the studios are going to go with what sells so it doesn't what, what's unfortunate is that, and, and then, you know, I saw there was a, uh, I attended a, it was like for XBiz and it was a panel and it was um, uh, a bunch of black performers and producers got to speak out about their views. And it was really fascinating because there was two sides of the spectrum there. And, and it was interesting because I feel like, you know, there, it never is one way because what what one person was arguing is like there's this studio called blacked Mm -hmm. and um i always was like god that's so fucking like it's such a racist like name and and they really just calling it black do you think i mean it it gets it communicates what it is it's it's it gets the message across yeah i just thought it was i don't know i just found it to be a little bit okay but i'm a white woman what do i know so it's like you know you know plenty it's that's the thing it's just because you're white doesn't mean your opinion has no value which is like one of my least favorite things about like the current climate you know but i know what you mean it does sound like harsh you know it's like yeah but i mean but but i guess what i mean when i say that is I, i i agree with you like i think everyone's opinion matters um but it's more like well it's offensive to me but like hey, if, if everyone else, you know, if, if black performers aren't offended, then okay, you know, I, I will take direction from them on this. But where it got complicated was in, on this, this panel was that, um, you know, there were some black performers that were kind of like, well, you know, this is um, fetishizing mm-hmm. black performers. And so it's, it's fetishizing them. And then the other, uh, there was another black performer that said, but this studio is hiring black performers for super high end like enviable content that like a lot of people want to shoot for so like what which argument is correct so it was interesting to hear their perspective on that um but as far as like the 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 racist thing that i've noticed glaringly obvious and i refuse to i always refuse to do it i never patted myself on the back or tweeted about this but like when they would be like charging white girls would charge more to work with a black guy and that's a that's a real thing that's a real oh, thing that yeah. happens oh is, my God. is it because oh. they just assume they're gonna have a bigger dick and like they'll be sore the next day so i i initially was like because i i never want to believe the worst in anyone like so for me i was like okay maybe it is the big dick thing 
but then um, it, it was, so what a lot of the agents would do is they would, it was like a tier of um, different things that the girl would do. So they'd start with like maybe girl, girl, then they go to boy, girl, then they do like interracial, then they do anal. And so they could ask for more money for each thing. But it's like, you know, you shouldn't be asking for more money to work with a different, a person of a different race. Like I can understand anal because there's- That doesn't seem to make sense. Cause that almost doesn't. seems like inherently- No. What is all that different? Like if dick size is the same, like what, what is the difference? Like there why, you yeah. know? It's, 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 so the agent, some of the agents would be like, well, it's just a way for her to make more money. And I'm like, right, but why, why though? she more yeah. money because the person happens to be black? It, it, it just, it always rubbed me the wrong way and I would refuse it. I would say, no, I'm not going to pay you. And so I would just hire a girl that would do it for, for the same and then, amount. They, then I got accused of being cheap or not wanting to pay more. Uh, about that, it's a principle. I'm like, I feel dirty. And like, I will tell you the last time um, this happened, it was horrible was I had told the girl, you're working with this performer, it's a black performer. And, and I tell people who they're working with so that they always feel comfortable, like that they don't have, they didn't date or there wasn't an issue. So I was like, you're working with this guy. Are you cool with him? Oh yeah, I like him. He's great. Okay, cool. I get to set. And, and so when I booked her, I told the agent, you know, here's her rate. This is what I'm paying and this is the guy or whatever. And the agent must not have like paid attention. But when she was on set, he goes, you have to pay her $200 more. And I said, well, why? And he's like, I said, is it because he has a big dick? Because this guy did. And he said, no, it's because he's black. <gasps> uh, um, <laughs> and, and so then it was one of those weird situations where the girl was like, no, no, it, it's mm. not that. It's this. And then I, as a producer, it's like, well, do I pay the girl and then feel like shit? Or do I not pay her? And then she feels like she somehow, I, I don't. It's right, because who, from the performer's perspective, what, who wouldn't want $200 more for doing the course. thing they're going to, right? Everyone Absolutely. likes $200 more. Yeah, correct. That, I wonder if it's just an old, old thing. Like maybe it started, maybe that came about, like when there genuinely were, I don't know, genuine racist producers, or I don't know. I don't know. It must have come from somewhere. You know, there was this one agent, I tell this story all the time, this is 100% true, where it was like Black History Month, and he was offering half off his female performers that were Black. Oh my God. Was this recently? No, this was in like, um, I think it was like 2012, and I had just started. Half off. Oh my God. And I was like, I remember seeing it and I thought this is like a Saturday night live sketch. Like it just didn't feel like real life, but it was just so nonchalant. Like, and I'm thinking to myself, like, this is the world we live in. I mean, it's just, it's gotta be an unconscious like that. I think that that person, maybe they had the intention of, Hey, we want to work these girls more. We want to acknowledge the month. Yeah. It's like, you want to hope that there was a good heart oh. behind that and that he wanted that he wanted his, his people to work more. But, uh, like that does come across like pretty auctiony. I don't know. It's, it's not yeah. great. It's like, I, there must've been other ways to, uh, to was, get them uh, more work. I don't hire from that age. <laughs> I don't even know if they're still in existence to Nobody be honest. Nobody wants to think think of themselves as half off to me that's like oh you're about to be put out to pasture let's try to get one more yeah. go <laughs> yeah wow correct yikes you know i mean and it, it, it like i see what you're saying like maybe the intention was was good but i think optics are so important i think people often don't think about them you know when they're when they're acting it's sort of the same with me not tweeting it's like maybe the optics of that was bad because I should have been more vocally sensitive, but it's just like, that's just not who I am. And I don't want to ever appear like phony because I feel like, you know, if I'm sitting there giving myself a pat on the back, I feel like mm. from my perspective, if somebody else was, is doing that, I'm always thinking. Like, oh, wow, they're trying too hard. Like they're. Yeah, like, oh, they don't yeah. really feel that way. They're just, they just want to look good. Or it's like, I want to actually be good. Yeah. I think that's important. To me, it seems, and maybe I'm just not watching enough porn, but to me, it seems there really are way more white performers than black mm -hmm. performers. I have seen almost no Indian performers. Yeah. Do you, are you seeing that too? Do you feel like there's maybe a connection here or is there just more interest? 
I don't really know, like, you know, it's hard to say. Like, I mean, I know that, like, um, I hate saying interracial because I even hate, like, that, that, that we're using that as a term because to me mm. it's, like, it's two people fucking. But, like, right. the term is, like, IR. That's what people search for or whatever on the tube sites. I mean, the tube sites often dictate the genres that are being shot. But um, I, I don't know because I'm not an agent and I don't know who's – coming into the business. I mean, maybe it's, it is just predominantly white people are interested in being porn stars, or maybe it's, there's a lot more black performers that even I know about that just haven't gotten the, you know, mainstream representation or Mm, whatever, because a lot of studios maybe aren't shooting that. I I don't really know. I know that when I attended that panel, one of the great pieces of advice Lotus Lane gave was like, you know, she commented on like a lot of white producers that like, were like, well, I go to the agent sites and I only see these five people, mm-hmm. but she was like, you know, you need to look at other black performers and maybe who they're following because some of those performers aren't being repped by agents. So it's a matter of trying to seek them out as well and finding where they're at. But I agree. There's not, there doesn't seem to be a lot of black performers, at least that you're seeing in a lot of the mainstream porn, you know? And whose job is it to seek out talent is that the agent's job uh no it would probably be the producer and especially since like there has been a push with a lot of production companies like trying to diversify even more because what ends up happening is i mean probably like the same with hollywood where you have your mainstream people that you go to and so you're using that same you know whatever like 20 year old performer that same black performer that same you know i don't want to say milf but like that same older performer like you're just reusing the same person over and over again instead of like branching out and seeing what else may, might be out there and it's like it's a it's like a um, chicken or the egg thing right like if you want to use someone whose work you you've seen and you know right. is good that you know yeah. is um a, like will be there is professional is, is is you know fun to watch other people love them a lot of fans but it's yeah. like uh, yeah those when do you go these are the tried and true people i just want to make this right. thing that i know will be good and it's like in a way it maybe is like a risk to try somebody new it's, then it's yeah. like well if it doesn't work out you got to reshoot you got to recast um no so it's almost like i don't know could there be you know how they have like in the mlb like a farm system it's like is there something where it's like you can get into like um like almost like junior varsity for porn yeah. you know it would be interesting because i will tell you that this pandemic has created a great opportunity for me as a producer to use some girls that were always on the agent um, sites that maybe I, you know, they're not a list. So, and they maybe don't have a lot of followers and they're not going to guarantee like sales or, you know, um, a lot of attention, but giving those people a chance and really getting to know them. And there's so many performers that are in that category Mm. that I've gotten to use recently because I'm like, Oh my God, like I, probably wouldn't have hired this person or maybe they're you know more on the fringe or maybe a little bit too goth for what I would normally shoot but I can shoot them now and so like it's it's nice because the pandemic has given me as an opportunity like a lot of the A-list girls are on OnlyFans surviving just fine but a lot of the other girls that maybe weren't front and center are now getting opportunities but you're right it's a risk it's a risk hiring anyone I don't know Mm -hmm. and, and not knowing their work and not knowing you know, if they're they they really love this job or they're just doing it because they're absolutely desperate for money, which I don't want to hire those people. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's what OnlyFans will become is the kind of in between, you know, because if you know yeah. who's at the top of the charts on OnlyFans, like, you know, these top 20 people are okay, they'll probably be pretty solid. You can look at their yeah. work and maybe that'll be the way for like the bigger studios can merge and work with OnlyFans and, you know, yeah. everybody involved can be like, okay, well, these people are coming up and they're doing their thing. So maybe they pluck out the top talent there. Um, but yeah, I agree. It should, it both should exist. I feel like they, you need each other. Um, yeah. tastes are always changing. Um, yeah. so I think I, it, I, I do believe there should be, I mean, like it just, you know, we kind of, when I was talking about like the fringe people or the people that weren't like A-list, like, you know, those aren't, it's not, I think we need to diversify, not just like, you know, racially but age wise but also just like types i mean like Mm. body type size but it's it's hard because a lot of times you're catering to a demand itch okay yeah but it's like you know i'm not gonna hire an a a girl who wears a size a bra for a big tip movie so it's like you are limited in what you're shooting 
in, yeah. in a lot of ways. With there's a difference. Yeah. There's types and then there's roles. You yeah. Know? Correct. What types would you love to see more of? I mean, honestly, like, I mean, well, as far as like, I will say, and I've, I've been wanting this for a long time. A lot of times it was like, you put people in a specific niche. And for me, it's like, I don't, if I'm doing a movie that's about like cheating, I don't want to have just all white people or all skinny 20 year olds. You know, I want to have different ages, different races, different sizes in one movie, instead of like trying to fit into a box of like, these girls must be like this. Right. And so I think I would say obviously more racial diversity across the board, if there was more access to even more people, but also sizes. Hmm. I would like to see more curvy people. And there are those people, but again, it's like, how do you find them if they're not on an agency? It's, it's like, well, if you're looking for somebody who has 15 pounds to lose, I'm right here. (laughs) I would be perfect if I just lost the quarantine. I don't know. I turned, I turned around and I was in a different bracket of pounds. And I was like, wow, usually I stay in like a five pound range, but you know what I mean? It's like, it's so easy. Like I had so many goals at the beginning of this quarantine. I was like, I'm going to fit into a different size pants. I'm going to fit into smaller pants. It's now it's now I don't even wear pants, pants are gone. Pants are away. Yeah. How sad, right? And I'm, you see all these ads on Instagram for like, Ooh, sexy sweatpants. Like this is what we've become. Like we're, we're, that the sweatpants uh, industry has skyrocketed, like all these matching sets, like, ooh, get yes. some sweatpants he can't say no to. Like, these are real ads that we see. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I'm not saying I didn't buy some, but. <laughs> this is why I'm fasting right now, though. I mean. Yes, you're doing the intermittent fasting, so you can't, so you, what, you're not eating for like 12 hours? Is 16. that what it is? 16? 16. I, I'm, yeah, so I. I fast from seven at night till 11 in the morning. Okay. So yeah, you have your dinner at seven then you're done and then you eat it. That seems really doable. Cause it's just like yeah. an earlier dinner and then like no breakfast. And then it's like, just be yeah. busy in the morning and like, poof, it's time to, eat. yeah, that seems yeah. very doable. It's hard when, like I said, I, with the gyms being closed down too, like, and also, I mean, I'll tell you this, like the older you get <laughs> your metabolism. Yeah. I used to be like a size zero and like would eat at McDonald's. And now it's like, I eat one French fry and it's like, I've gained five pounds. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. It's same girl. I, and it's like, I'm not even eating everything in sight. I just like, I think the not exercising multiple times a week, is just like, my body's like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, that goes everyone. It's killing everyone in this quarantine. Kiss your pants. Goodbye. I mean, maybe (laughs) this will usher in a new, right. We're talking about, we need more types. Like maybe the quarantine is going to make slightly overweight porn more popular yes <laughs> i feel like a lot of men you know really like curvy women and natural women and i hope so yeah. <laughs> I you. yeah because it looks like hey you know what like she can go to a baseball game and eat a disgusting hot dog and then like oh. it won't be a big deal yeah and there's nothing hotter than that i mean seriously a girl knocking back a couple beers and drinking a, you know it's, it's fun like- yeah well you're not gonna do that at home you know like if you're eating a bunch of hot dogs and beers at home it's like eh, all right we should watch a few youtube cooking videos but like of course you're watching a game okay um i know we were we said we maybe would talk about ron jeremy but he is in the news he is topical Uh, i think yesterday i read an article uh 20 new charges have come out um 20 new sexual assault counts including one with a 15 year old girl they span over a 16 year period um had you ever worked with him in your in your 10 years in the industry no i had been on set with him once and then when i used to be a waitress uh he came into my restaurant once i met him then but like no um you know it's funny like one of my friends uh she's retired now but a legendary performer had told me a story about how he was, and she's a tough broad. I mean, like, she is like, not going to take any shit. And she said she had gone to his house to shoot content and he had been very like, not respecting boundaries. So, um, but I mean, it's, it's astounding that there's so many women. I mean, it's sort of like Weinstein and Cosby where it's just like so many people coming out, which is great that people are having the courage to step out and say something. 
um, and horrific to think that this went on for so long and nobody did anything. But I mean, maybe people didn't know. I, I who knows? Yeah, what, yeah. It says that. Um, I'm curious. Ron Jeremy was part of his name is his real name is Ronald Jeremy Hyatt. Oh, um, it is. <laughs> yes. Oh God, he looks. Too, look how gross he looks. I mean, ooh, I mean, even at his best, ask, it looks like Hannibal Lecter. It does he does look like it's a lot of Hannibal Lecter vibes? And I think the same group of people that took down Weinstein, I think he was included in this. Uh, the same group of prosecutors. It was yeah, Har the same group of people as Harvey Weinstein producer David uh, Gilloid, G U I L L O D, by a task force formed by District Attorney Jackie Lacey in 2017 to investigate sexual misconduct in the entertainment industry. I think Gilloid pleaded not guilty. Weinstein, we know all about that. So, what about Tori Allred? Is she repping the girls? She always reps. This, oh, you know, I I feel like she might be, but this article does not touch on that. It's more just like, oh, a lot of accounts. It's so it's always the ugly dudes. I don't know. <laughs> you never have some like you know charming, good looking Bradley dude Cooper. with sexual assault. It's like, all right, it's like learn a new skill, learn some jokes, you know. <laughs> yeah. You're not well, with Harvey Weinstein, they said like, you know, because obviously they say rape is, is a, um, you know, it's not power a, thing, a, right? Yeah, power yeah. thing. It's not sexual, but like, you know, I think that it, what you're saying with regards to it being ugly dudes is there's a level of insecurity, you know, that growing up, even if you're successful, like Ron Jeremy's successful and, you know, Weinstein yeah. successful, but like, there's something in your mindset where it's like, you have to prove yes and it's, it's you've so logged cool. away the years of rejections we've all yeah. been rejected for i mean we all have our yeah. shit we all have yeah. our stuff that we've got to overcome as people that's like that's life but like right i think there's something about i know this makes me sound shallow but like ugly dudes it's almost like even regular guys that shit on me in comedy for no reason it's like oh i remind you of somebody that yes rejected, rejected you in high school and it's like when you see just like personal attacks and you're like wait a minute i'm actually like quite a lovely person like what is your beef you know yeah and it's right they feel like well deep down it's like an insecurity thing they got to overcome it and like yeah meanwhile he was so successful around jeremy but it's like that's not enough i guess he's like has to for his psyche and ego has to be you know killing it sexually but it's like you're raping so it's not really shouldn't count you know what i mean like you didn't uh, I, I wish that i knew more about him because i feel like weinstein you could kind of, um, I don't want to say understand, but like meaning like knowing the kind of person that he was, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah. But like Ron Jeremy, it is interesting because I heard on the radio and I was like, well, you're wrong. But like they were talking about how, well, he's in porn and he still wants to rape people. And it's like, well, yeah, because it's not about sex. Because if it was, then he'd be fine. It's about yeah. the power thing. And it's, I'm just curious psychologically to understand like where he, like where that, stemmed from or whatever i mean again don't know enough about him but it's yeah like it's like knowing you can get away with it right you get away with it for enough <laughs> years look at epstein you know he yes. they were he and galene were like trafficking girls yep. since the 90s and yeah. it's like they were getting they've been getting they were getting away with it for like decades so it's like when you're a rich and powerful person and yes. you're already getting away with the thing what motivation yes. do you have to stop doing the thing of course so, not. You're done. Yeah, nobody's yeah. gonna stop you. I mean, but Ron Jeremy is one of the weird ones because he's rich and powerful. Like he, like I, I, he. There's like something almost like there's a sadistic side to it because it's like, is he powerful? And it, it's I don't know. Like he's just. Um, yeah, I don't know. He looks like a foot. I don't know. I don't know that the answer either. But it's it's the the overall takeaway is like it's it's good that these people are getting you know speaking out. Some I'm so glad like you think about out. when Weinstein started at all or maybe it was was Weinstein before Bill Cosby I can't remember oh but. god um I think they might have been they may have been going on at the same time but okay it, yeah yeah maybe Bill Cosby was first but Weinstein sort of overshadowed that but hmm. it's good it's so good to see women coming forward and speaking out against these fucking pieces of shit and let's just I mean they were saying today on the radio that you know Ron Jeremy's done. I'm assuming. I would hope. Um, uh, yeah, you'd hope so. Yeah, maybe he'll just do prison porn. 
Oh God. Some guy. <laughs> He'll be like, he'll bring a camera and a soap into the shower and just see what happens. I don't know. Uh, no. That's gross. Like, no one wants to see that. He doesn't that. take a shower. Oh, uh, yeah. He's, He's very smelly. He's exfoliate his whole life. Um, Jackie, you're a dream. I'm a big fan. Where can people follow you, find your work, support you, all that good stuff? Everything is Jackie St. James, and that's Jackie with a Y, J-A-C-K-Y-S-T-J-A-M-E-S. That's uh, JackieStJames.com. Um, Jackie St. James on Instagram. Uh, I cancel my Facebook because of cancel culture. But Facebook I want- is lame. Facebook is for oh, old okay. people. It's for yeah. olds. Yeah, no, Facebook is over. We don't need it. <laughs> I'm one of those. Um, and then you can find me on Twitter, but I, I'm not very active on there as well. But Instagram, that's kind of mostly me. Okay. Awesome. And then like, um, have you thought about, and then there's parlor, which is like total free speech. Uh, it's basically yeah. like Twitter, but f- like total free speech. So I feel like that's a lot of adult people are going to, are going to be more into that. I think. I haven't told about that. I haven't checked it out yet, but maybe I will. But I, don't think yeah. I, I ever want to vocalize anything anymore. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Well, yeah, it's all good. Um, Jackie, so much. Thank you so much for coming on. This was a really great discussion. I feel like we touched on a lot of uh, interesting stuff. So, yeah, hopefully we can do this again sometime. Yeah, I would love that. Thank you.